Hey everybody, how you doing? Today we're gonna debug release code. In my last video, I talked about how to use core dumps to help you figure out problems that happen with code that you've written that's already out in the field. Link in the description if you missed that one. But there was a really great question posted in response to that video. Specifically, Simon asked, what about release and debug builds? We don't usually release code with debug symbols included, so what's the use of a core dump if the program doesn't have any debug symbols? And I thought, what a great question. Let's make a video about that. Well, first of all, let's look at the difference between a debug build and a release build, why we even have them. And so sometimes we compile our code differently depending on what it is we're trying to accomplish. In the early stages, when I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the program, my goal is always to get as much information about the inner workings of my program as possible. And so I want to include all the debugging stuff that I can so that if something goes wrong, I can figure out what happened. It just makes it easier to find problems. But when I ship that code out into the world, I may have different concerns, I may have some different priorities, and I may start taking some of that debug information out of my program. Because, hey, I want it to be smaller, I want to be able to download this code quickly, and taking out debug symbols makes for smaller binaries. And companies also sometimes try to obfuscate their programs to make them a little harder to figure out, a little harder to reverse engineer, and removing debug symbols from those programs does make reverse engineering harder, but if I'm determined, it doesn't stop me. And of course, we might also turn on all sorts of optimizations, which make our code run faster. But optimizations can also make debugging more tricky because the compiler may take some shortcuts, it may actually change the code. Hopefully it's functionally the same underneath as far as what it actually does, but it may not directly match up with the source code, and so figuring out what's going wrong when something goes wrong can be trickier. So what do we do if we find a bug in our release code? It's out in the field, we've stripped out all this information, is a core dump even still useful? Well, let's explore a few options. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, is it even necessary to have a separate release and debug build? A determined adversary is still going to succeed in reverse engineering your code, even if you remove debug symbols, even if you turn on optimizations. It will slow them down a bit, but if they're good at it, they're still gonna figure it out. And disks are bigger and network speeds are faster these days, so maybe slightly larger binaries, slightly slower downloads, maybe it's not that big of a deal. And depending on your program, maybe the speedups that you get by turning on compiler optimizations may not really matter. I mean, say I have a program that runs in one millisecond. Do I really care if it runs 10 times faster? Sometimes I do, often I don't. Now, this may be different for you. Typically, I consider my time to be more valuable than my computer's time. So before you go down this path, just make sure that it makes sense, that it actually really is worth the speed up and the benefits that you're getting from doing a release build. So maybe you don't need one and that'll simplify things. But okay, so you've decided that you absolutely need a debug build and a release build. So today's video is about what can we do even when we have this debug build and this release build, can we debug release code? So what are our options? Option number one, debug like a reverse engineer. I can still load it up in my debugger, I can still disassemble the code, and I can work through the assembly code using the next I and step I commands. And what am I thinking? That would be crazy. And the point is, you can do this. In this specific case, I don't recommend it, but it's possible. And reverse engineering can be a lot of fun. In fact, it might be a fun topic for future videos, but I wouldn't use this approach for your everyday debugging. If you do, you're just making your life harder than it needs to be. So a more convenient option is to compile our program with debug symbols and then use the strip command to remove those symbols. And I'm keeping two copies, one with symbols included and one without. Now I can release the one without debug symbols. It's smaller and easier to download, and it's slightly more difficult to reverse engineer, and let's say it crashes out there and someone sends you a core dump, remember that the core dump is just a copy of its memory contents. And remember that strip, it took out the debug symbols, but it didn't change where everything in memory is placed. It just took out the symbols. And so I can load up the version with debug symbols into GDB with the core dump, and I can debug it as if the debug symbols had been there all along. So this is one way that you can get the best of both worlds. You get smaller downloads, you get more difficult reverse engineering, but you still get debuggability. Now it's important to note, this is not the same as just trying to debug your release binary with your debug build in GDB. This is not going to work. Let's see what happens if I try that. I run my release build at core dumps, and then I load it into GDB with the debug build and things look, yeah, they look much less helpful. Why? Because these are different compiled programs. If we look at where their main functions are, for example, we see that they're at different locations in memory, and I would expect everything else to be somewhere different too. So matching that core dump to the other binary just isn't gonna make any sense, unless you get really, really lucky. 
So instead, produce your release build with debug symbols and then use the strip command to remove those debug symbols and then deploy that version. And you'll have an easier time debugging if you run into problems in the field. Now this still doesn't address the issue of optimizations. And I don't have a silver bullet here. Debugging a program with optimizations turned on is just in general going to be a bit more difficult. First, I would check and see if you really think you need optimizations turned on at all. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but the speed up may not matter in your particular application. Second, I would do a lot of testing to make sure that you find as many bugs as you possibly can before you make your release build. Third, I would try to reproduce any bugs that you find in the release build in an unoptimized version of the code. So if all these options fail and you still have an optimized program and you need to try to debug it, well, you can still try. And you might get lucky. With our little test program, if I compile it with optimizations and I add in debug symbols, things still work. But in this case, we basically got lucky. To demonstrate this, I wrote another simple program that I knew would be optimized differently. And well, you can see that GDB still works, but we get some odd behaviors. A lot of variables are optimized out, so I can't see their values. That's pretty much par for the course when you're dealing with optimizations turned on. And also the debugger, as I'm stepping through, shows me some code lines that are close, but they're clearly not what the program is actually doing. And this is because the compiler changed the code around a fair amount. For example, if we look at the generated assembly for main, you'll notice that the malloc calls and the memset calls at the start of the program, they got turned into calloc calls. Same functionality, but lower overhead. So your mileage may vary, but you might get lucky. Then again, you may not. And in the end, you can always fall back on debugging assembly code. Let's hope it doesn't get to that, but it's always an option if everything else fails. So that's it for today. I just wanted to explain a little more about debug builds and release builds and help you know that even if you do make release builds and you deploy those, that, that doesn't mean that your core dump's completely useless. You can often still use it, especially if you saved a version that had debug symbols in it. And so with a little more planning ahead, I hope that this makes your next project easier, more debuggable, and helps you remain sane as you're learning to become a better programmer. And until next time, I'll see you all later.